Hello and welcome to Replay Value. Episode 13 begins with this overwhelming sense of isolation. Zero two in this gray room, all alone, devoid of color. Hero looking and being a blank face in a crowd of gray. Zero two in a random room with her only interaction with a person whose features are so hazy in her memory that it's just a silhouette and distorts like static. Zero Two is all alone in this room, chained to the wall, looking up to the ceiling to see birds in pairs of two flying up above her. Hero is also alone, in a bit of a different way. Sure, he's surrounded by other kids, but he's isolated with this thought of who he is, and all of his other questions that are constantly ignored. Because he's a teen code, he's already special. But even compared to the other teen code we see, Ichigo, he doesn't have the same desire to be like all the others. He actively embraces being different, which is shown by when he names himself, Hiro. This shot is the perfect representation of how far removed he is from everyone else. He's all alone here, despite being surrounded by so many people. This feeling of curiosity and isolation is what drives Hiro to want to know about Zero Two, almost a compulsion that inspires him to ignore authority and give us our fated first meeting. We've talked a lot about Hero and Zero Two's relationship over the other Darling and the Franks videos that are up on the channel, talking about how their perspectives are different, like in the case of the Gian story in episode one, or their views of duty in episode three. But episode 13 gives us a new insight to their relationship, which I think we can best express through some age old Eastern concept, the yin and the yang. To some, it is a token symbol that serves as a representation of Eastern spiritualism, something to plaster on the wall to espouse some semblance of philosophical competence. But it is much more than that. The yin and the yang serve as a fundamental illustration to an observation about the world. An observation that states the following, the world is not beholden to the narrative of epic confrontations between two diametrically opposing forces. Rather, these seemingly diametric forces, the yin, representation of the moon, the passive femininity, and the dark, and the yang, representation of the sun, the proactive masculinity, and the light, complement the other and continuously interact in unseen ways. Neither side can truly gain dominance over the other, and neither can exist without the other, the light and the dark the yin and the yang, continuously caught in an eternal cyclical embrace, a relationship that is dictated by duality, a relationship that mimics Zero Two and Hero. Zero Two is bold and uninhibited. She is unabashed about revealing her body, she's constantly attempting to engage fights, and she takes actions because she believes them to be fun. In their waltz, she leads the tempo with her graceful strides. Hero, however, is much more subdued and passive. While Zero Two is comfortable sharing her body, Hero shrinks and cowers at the presence of it. He yields to authority, whereas Zero Two laughs in the face of it. And in their waltz, it is he who follows Zero Two's lead with cluttered steps. Despite Yin being the feminine and Yang being the masculine, there is little argument to be made that at the beginning of Darling and the Franks, Yin is Hero and Yang is Zero Two. But that's why episode 13 is so interesting. Strelitzia, the medium for O2 and Hero's partnership, connects them in a more personal way than ever before, flinging us back into the past, giving us this great mechanical static effect to transition, which is just honestly one of the most interesting ways to do a flashback that I've seen in a while. And in this flashback, we see a world that is familiar, yet dissimilar. Where the hero we knew quietly followed orders, the hero of the past is constantly asking questions. The Zero Two we knew, who was bold and uninhibited, young Zero Two of yesterday is inarticulate, fearful, feral. This isn't the hero and Zero Two we're familiar with. No longer is hero the yin to Zero Two's yang, rather it is the opposite. Hero is yang, and Zero Two is yin. And no scene makes this distinction clear, than the scene where Hiro decides to take the initiative and rescue Zero Two from her place in the facility. And we know this scene is important because like almost every other important relationship scene, it's letterboxed. And the object it chooses to focus on is a single feather falling. The parallels between their past interactions go super deep, like Hiro giving Zero Two candy, being why she likes sweets, and the use of the word darling, 
Hero is the one who reaches out a hand to change Zero Two's life here, as Zero Two does for Hero before they pilot for the first time together. Hero is the one bringing her some place she's never been before, as Zero Two does for Hero when she brings him into the city. There are tons of other ones that I'm not including here. But the most important one is that it is Hero who is attempting to leave this society and bringing Zero Two along with him, just like Zero Two asks Hero to leave with her. Society may be safe, but it isn't free. And Zero Two is more than willing to go despite the fact that she cannot understand or speak or know who Hero is. She takes a leap of faith and trusts him. Hero here is the active, a boy standing in the sky and asking her to join him. It is after Hero has forgotten about Zero Two and Zero Two has been separated from Hero that these two became more like each other, even flipping their roles, like the sun revealing sunken places and hiding in shade what had been revealed. The opening narration makes this similarity clear, as they speak the same lines to explain the current situation. But later the question of who am I is ever-present for Hero and non-existent for Zero Two. These mirrored structures give a sense of sameness, but they are fundamentally different, opposites even. And at the end of episode 13, Zero Two understands who she is, a monster. And Hero no longer cares about who he is, just another cog in the machine who becomes like all the other children as he no longer gives names. But maybe not all that different. After all, he still does try to save Zero Two when he thinks she's in danger of drowning. Episode 13 finally gave us some of the answers we were looking for and proposed a whole bunch of new questions. But one of those key answers is why Zero Two and Hero work so well together. And that's because they were both alone in the world. Zero Two chained up in a room and Hero isolated from the children around him. Even though Ichigo, Goro, and Mitsuru were all there, he was different from them. The same way that Zero Two is genetically different from literally every other character in the show. But when they finally meet, it's a clear instance of Yin and Yang. And even though they've been removed and changed by their experiences, Zero Two is still able to make Hero feel like he can fly, and Hero is the person who fundamentally accepts Zero Two regardless of who she is. Yin and Yang, Yang and Yin, these two parts who were isolated without the other, here we finally see their first meeting, a destined pairing, a beast and the prince. And if the ending of the book is anything to go by, this will not be a happy ending. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more analysis pieces, including more Darling in the Franks. Follow at value underscore replay on Twitter for more up-to-date info, link in the description. Comment if you thought this was interesting. Leave a like if you want more. And we'll be back real soon with a new video. But until then, thanks for watching.